In this video, we're going to solve absolute value equations. Before we get to solving them, let's lay out the different options that we can see. So there's three different presentations we can have for an absolute value equation. One of them can say the absolute value of x is equal to a, where a is positive. If that's the case, there are two different solutions. So if we have the absolute value of x equals 27, then we know that inside the absolute value could be 27, since the absolute value of 27 is 27. Or inside the absolute value could be negative 27, since negative 27, the absolute value of that is equal to 27. So here there's two cases to consider. If we have the absolute value of x is equal to 0, then there is one case to consider, and that's just whatever's inside the absolute value must equal 0. The third case is the absolute value of x is equal to a, where a is negative. If that's the case, there would be no solution because we can't take an absolute value and have it equal to something negative that doesn't make any sense. Absolute value is non-negative and then we're saying it equals something negative. That, that's no solution there. Okay, so here we don't have to get x by, uh, uh, sorry, the absolute value all by itself. It's already by itself. Let's talk about what this means. We're going to take the absolute value of this and the result is 5. It's a positive, so there's two cases to consider. The first case is that this thing itself, x equals 5, and that makes sense because we can plug in 5, the absolute value of 5 is 5. Or the second case is that this is equal to negative 5. What's inside the absolute value could equal negative 5. This is complete, however, the directions do ask us to graph and write an interval notation. When we're graphing an absolute value equation, we use a number line, not a coordinate plane. So my number line looks like this, it's just one dimension, and then I can set up the, the intervals however I please, I just need to make sure that I'm consistent with my tick marks. So if I want to be lazy, I can just say, okay, this is going to be negative 5, and then 0, and then 5. If you want to include all of the integers between negative 5 and 5, that's fine, um, just as long as you're consistent. You can't say this is negative 5, this is 0, and then this is 2, and this is 5. That would be inconsistent. We just need to make sure we are consistent with our intervals here, so that would be 10. When we graph this, it's just a single point, so we would just put a point over negative 5 and a point over 5. Lastly, it asks for interval notation. Interval notation for a discrete uh, set of values. We use braces and we list them from least to greatest. So it would be negative 5, comma 5. Close the braces. So those are the two solutions. So we can represent it algebraically on a graph or in interval notation. Looking at letter B, we have the absolute value of k is equal to the square root of 3. The absolute value is by itself, so now basically what this means is that inside the absolute value, k could equal the square root of 3, or k could be the negative square root of 3. There's no additional work. k is isolated in either of these two cases, so this would be the final solution set. Um, from here, if we want to graph it, if you want to get fancy, you could put more tick marks on your uh, number line, but we do want to be careful with these. Um, you can't say like the square root of 3 and the square root of 2 and the square root of 1 because those aren't evenly spaced. I wouldn't get fancy here. I would just say, okay, here's negative root 3, here's 0, here's the square root of 3. We put a dot over the negative root 3 and we put a dot on the square root of 3. In interval notation, because these are discrete points, we would have negative square root of 3 and the square root of 3. For letter C, we have the absolute value of y equals negative 6. So this is saying find a number, take its absolute value, and the result is negative 6. That's not a thing. In this case, there is no solution. There is no case to consider. Uh, so let's see. We can write no solution. If we're going to represent this on a number line, you can have a number line. You can put whatever numbers you like on it negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and then we don't put any dots anywhere. We're, there's no points that, that are. So it's just a number line with no extra points on it. In interval notation, you can open up the braces and then don't put anything inside because there's no solution. So it would just be empty braces. And that's how we would represent the no solution case. Looking at letter D, so letter D, we have the absolute value of something is equal to 0. In this case, there's one solution and only one solution, and that's when what's inside the absolute value, when w plus 1 is equal to 0 itself. Here we do have a little bit of work. We need to get w by itself, so we'll subtract 1 from both sides. 
and we get W equals negative 1. So there's our one solution on a number line if we're going to graph it we would just put a point over negative 1 wherever negative 1 appears on our number line and in interval notation we would open up a set of braces and put negative 1 inside the braces and that's how we represent the one solution for letter D for letter E we do have a little bit of work the absolute value is not by itself it's being subtracted by 4 so what we're going to do first is we're going to add 4 to both sides Now we have the absolute value of x is equal to 13. I'm going to swap out the marker. I think this one's dying. And so now we have the absolute value is equal to something positive. Um, if it's equal to something positive, there are two cases to consider. When the absolute va what's inside the absolute value equals that positive number, because the absolute value of 13 is 13, or when what's inside the absolute value equals the negative of that number, x equals negative 13, there's nothing else to do. Those are the two solutions, 13 and negative 13. On a number line, we would just put a dot over negative 13 and a dot over 13. And in interval notation, we would write negative 13 first because it's smaller, positive 13 second. That would be the solution for E. Last but not least, letter F. So letter F, the first thing we need to do is isolate the absolute value. It's being added by 3. This plus 3 is outside of the absolute value. We need to move it to the other side. So we will subtract 3 from both sides. Now we have the absolute value of x is equal to negative 14. When absolute value equals something negative, that indicates to us there is no solution. So we can say no solution. On a graph, we would just have a number line. and we just wouldn't have anything on that. So I just have negative 15, negative 14, negative 13, negative 12. You can put whatever you want on there as long as it's consistent. Um, there's just no dots uh, or no points on that number line. And then in interval notation, we would open up a set of braces and put nothing inside of it.